What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another episode of the Smart Guy Moments Smack Talk Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango. Joining me, as always, are Robert DeFelice. We're all elite, baby. And Callum Wiggins. The real Pro Wrestling Awards. <laughs> we That's are right. doing... Uh, we're lots of awards things going on right now. We just got done recording our breakdown of the Slammy Awards for the hot tags. And, you know, today's Wednesday, so who knows what's going to change in the meantime. But we're recording in advance another extra thing here that we didn't have planned a couple weeks ago, but I ended up deciding that this was a better option here. Instead of just doing the WWE end of the year awards that we do for Smart Cup Moment, and instead of covering the NXT year end awards and you know, other things that go along with that, we figured we need to give a little bit of love to AEW. And I know that people have mentioned that we should do this in the past. And it's it's a lot, actually, to do these awards things, especially the Smart Cat Moment Awards, which are coming up, because that's going to be some giant recording and the, the video editing. It takes longer and whatever. But what we're doing here is we're going to do a kind of shorter version of that. It's the same basic structure of the typical Smart Cat Moment Awards. Just trimmed down a little bit because they don't have the same amount of things as WWE does. We can't do, you know, what's the best WWE network documentary or whatever of the year when the programs don't exist because uh, it's AEW, not WWE. We don't have the extra characters uh, on this list. We don't have quite as many of the same awards, but we have the bulk of them. You know, we've got the male and female and overall performer of the year the heel and baby face of the year tag team commentator uh, recognition. You got the gimmick of the year storylines match of the year it goes with pay-per-view event of the year, et cetera, et cetera. And we're basically going to do our AEW version of the typical WWE setup. So if you've never checked out any of the smart Cat moment awards at the end of the year, in the past, then here's a quick breakdown. What essentially what we're doing here is, not the way that everybody else usually does these things. It's usually what's the best and that's whatever. We do the best and the worst because sometimes it's more fun to talk about the worst than it is the best even. A lot of times we'll get to the end of the year awards and we'll be like, yeah, the best is whatever and it's obvious and then that's whatever. But the worst, here's my opinion is whatever. And that ends up being fun too. So uh, we hope that you enjoy this. We hope that you in, uh, involve yourself in whatever fashion you can, which is I guess the best way out of all of them is for you to drop a comment and tell us your thoughts on what we have to say, but also your lists for these things. So as we're going through this podcast, I want you to you know take a note of what's going on. Maybe keep a little separate notepad list or something and uh, let us know who you pick for these different categories. We are interested to see what people agree and disagree with on. Very quickly, let me just talk out, uh, knock out a couple other plugs. In the meantime, obviously, if you are on YouTube or elsewhere or whatever, you should be following us. And if you are on YouTube, then hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Ring that little notification bell. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Hit the join button. Hit the applause button. And show your support in any fashion that you can like that. We'll come back around. We'll do some other plugs later on. I don't want to bog this down too much. Let's start getting into this with the first set. We're doing three sets of awards here instead of the usual six that we do for WWE. And the first set is the Technical Skills Awards. These are the things that are not specifically like uh, the best in-ring worker, but maybe the best ring work of the year, et cetera, et cetera. Let's start off with the best and the worst entrance of the year for AEW. Now, the All Elite Wrestling stuff that we're going to be looking back on for this year starts January. So we're not incorporating anything that happened over the first year's worth of w uh, AEW working their way into the mix, even though we didn't cover that in any kind of end of the year awards capacity. So if somebody goes, oh, Hangman Adam Page had a great entrance at All Out before, it's like, well, at All Out this year, that's what we're judging it based off of. So keep that in mind, everybody. Best and worst entrance of the year. Uh, for a lot of these, I still haven't made my first uh, official, uh, my first, my final official picks yet. But how you guys feeling? You got like uh, some go to answers for best and worst entrance of the year? I got the worst. Downstate plays Cody to the ring at Revolution. Oh, I forgot about that one. That was terrible. <laughs> I love Kingdom. Let me be clear Kingdom is a great song. And it's, it gets you hyped, you're in the mood. It's one of the best theme songs the company has because it's one of the more original ones. It's not produced by Mikey Ruckus. 
uh, downstate shouldn't play things live. <laughs> they shouldn't. Combine that with Cody revealing the neck tattoo, which has now grown on me in the same way it has grown on him. That's where it came from? It just grew on him? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, that's what I assume anyway. It's like the mark of the roads. Yeah, no one would all, yeah. no one would yeah. put that on their body. <laughs> it's just like a skin tag that turned into that. Yeah. <laughs> so now that's the worst entrance of the year for me. I totally forgot about that, too. That might be the worst. <laughs> I, for, for my worst one, I picked one which is a bit more just general in terms of just it happening on multiple shows, which was the original uh, Peter Avalon and Lieber Bates librarian entrance. Ah, oh, I don't mind it. Because I, I, I just don't really enjoy the, the shushing coming to the ring and stuff like that. It's just just felt a bit... It, it made the gimmick seem very redundant quickly, and I'm kind of happy that they've all moved on past that point now. I'm digging a uh, pretty Peter Avalon's theme. Oh yeah, he's too. fun. Yeah, I, I everything that they've done since that's the start of uh, the Brandon Cutler Peter Avalon ta- tag team and then feud following that has been excellent. It's one of the best parts of Dark. So here are the notes that I wrote down. I wrote Emmy Sakura because I don't like that. Oh, I theme. like the Freddie Mercury stuff. That's really good. I don't necessarily mind the Freddie Tony Mercury. Like fun. I don't mind the Freddie Mercury thing so much. I do think it's a little weird. But I just hate her actual theme. Like that I'm like I uh, recall her theme. Because I hate it How so much. It yeah, it's been months and months and I still remember it because I just I really hate it. I hate that song. So I wrote that down for that, but then I'm like, uh, oh, you know, do I really want to give that that? I wrote down Mel because I don't even remember what the hell she has got going on. But then if I don't remember it, what do I really hate about it. So the other main note that I had written down was Matt Seidel's uh, debut. Well, that's not really like it. That's not his entrance, <laughs> is it? That's me. But, but I guess his entrance. A long way. His entrance was jump there onto the thing and slip on the turnbuckle. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, so if Damn. I wouldn't we'll go, about, we'll talk about Matt Sardell later. <laughs> that's the thing. There's a few other things coming up. Um, in terms of the best one, the one that immediately stuck out in my mind was Chris Jericho at Revolution yep. being sung to the ring by that that choir. Yeah, I got Jericho down for that. Yeah, that was a really good one. I also appreciate the one where like they first got fans back into the building and people just singing Judas coming to the ring. Just like when the crowd sing Judas, it's just a good time. You know what? I will say best Judas singing entrance has to be the, the original one on the cruise. Because that yeah. was just like... That's 2019. Uh, is, so that, cool. is that That was January. All oh, right, yeah. All right, so yeah, that would count as well. Um, I do have a bit of an honorable mention, which isn't really super honorable, but I'm enjoying what I th- oh, I'm trying to remember her name. Is it is it Danny Jordan? Yes. Who's, who's resting on dark at the moment and who's coming out and her entrance at the moment is she's doing the Mean Girls entrance yep. from uh, yeah, from uh, the uh, yeah doing the uh, the Christmas performance. I just find that just that just pops me. I also had down um, Sting. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't, and, it doesn't have the same impact as like the crow theme or something. But uh, and, the Tony Schiavone thing, it's Sting, it snowfalls, it's great. And I just really love Sean Spears' theme. Josiah so Williams, second pitch for the day for him. Yeah. He's the man. Just wanted to give some credit to that. But yeah, I got uh, Jericho down. Even in general, just the Judas entrance is better than most things. But yeah, the choir in particular, that was really cool. Mm. Uh, best and the worst ring gear or clothing or attire or whatever you want to, you know, they, the shit they wear. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. I don't want to label this as best and worst shit that they wear, but maybe. Um, uh, I got a couple down for worst. I've got uh, Eddie Kingston. You could be particularly about that one. The no, I don't know, full gear. Yeah, the, uh, the, green one. the green one. Um, Evil Uno. I'm not a fan of what he wears. Uh, I don't know why he wears a thing that has like it's sleeveless where he's not really muscular. So it just kind of makes his arms look skinny. Uh, not a fan of Luther's, but I don't hate his enough to give it to that. And it, this sounds really kind of like people would be like, what? You got to be kidding me. I do have Abaddon down as worst potential. Why? Because I know I get it. Like that doesn't make any sense because she's a character and whatever. And that's crazier and that that's cooler in a sense but i just i there's something about abaddon i really don't like and i kind of wanted to put her down on a lot of things so i'm leaning more towards eddie kingston than anything else 
evil uno on a more regular basis but i do have abaddon as just being like yeah i don't like it like everybody else does yeah see i'm i wanted to put kingston as well but i kind of feel like the fact that it was a tribute to the sour i think he said and that kind of makes me just want to pull back a little bit because i feel like oh that's i can see what he's trying to do there even though it didn't look particularly great uh it came down to me a choice between either Lufa or miro and I didn't really know if I could really class the Miro one because technically the stuff that he's wearing... It's not ring that, gear. Yeah, it's not ring gear, so I kind of would probably end up going with Lufa for that one. Evil Uno. This, this wasn't very hard for me. <laughs> so it's, I, it's I don't... two for Evil Uno, two for Luther, essentially, like that kind of thing. Uh, honorable mention, Brendan Cutler's cool. I'd probably get along with him. I, I... See, I have he him down. Strike. I have him as my only pick for best. Really, I just it doesn't strike me as him needing that all that extra garb, you know? Yeah, but he's uh, uh, I was gonna say Magic the Gathering. Oh my god, what's it? Dungeons and Dragons? Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. He's a DD geek, uh, and he goes into that like that, so he's got this big dragon kind of esque sort of thing going on. I'm like, I, I, I like I that. I, win. I go for best on that. He's got like a five match winning streak, yeah. He's doing oh. well with <laughs> Well, well, listen here, Tony. Not all of us <laughs> watch the twenty-five matches. Dark <laughs> listen here, not everyone who watches those watches those. <laughs> Somebody maybe last night spent the whole time doing something else and fast forwarded. <laughs> uh, in terms of the best attire, I couldn't think of anything like super particular that stood out in my mind. So I went with just the people that I feel like gets the most consistently good ring gear. I think that's the Young Bucks. I think they're just typically, if they know when to do something special to make it a bit more different. But I think just generally, they just have really good patterns on their tights and stuff like that. So I'd go with them. They did do the cool uh, Lakers, Boston. Yeah, that was a good one with the, with the uh, FTR. Yeah, I like that. I think in general, Cody Rhodes always has great gear. In general, Kenny Omega's tights are always really good. Penta looks cool. Think... What? Penta looks cool. Hey, yeah, he does, but he can switch it up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? He's kind of a little bit Laparca esque, where it's the same exact thing every single time. So, Rey Mysterio at least tries, you know, oh, I got a different color mask this time. I got a different style, whatever. Hmm. Uh, signature maneuver of the year. Worst is the Judas effect. I don't, I don't like, like it. that. It's just he elbows somebody. Just elbow them at the beginning of the match. Then I hate moves like that with a passion, and especially when it doesn't look well. And like sometimes they'll do it, and it just kind of looks like he turned around and didn't actually hit the guy. I don't like that at all. Hate the Judas effect. Um. Huh. My worst, I had a few like honorable mentions. I had, I don't like the Revival's pole, dr pole driver. I have that down for best. <laughs> really? Because I, I, it's been because I love the, oh, I can't remember what they're calling it now. The, the Good Night machine. Express. Yeah, the, the good, good Night Express. Yeah, the Good Night but, Express is great. Yeah, I like that it's one. It's great, man. Love that the, name. The pole driver one, I know it's obviously a pole driver is like, it's a move that you don't see as often nowadays, especially on, on the WWE side of things. But I think the way they do it just, it doesn't look like he's really assisting it at all. He might as well just be hitting a pole driver. Um, I also don't really like, I don't like Penelope Ford's handspring elbow because, and I've never liked the handspring elbow because it's just like, okay, I'm just ending all of my momentum running towards the ring to hit this person just because, oh, it's a load of flips. So that looks cool. Uh, but my worst is silly string. It's too contrived for me. I'm okay with a certain element of like flippy bullshit and stuff like that, but that move, it takes so long for him to flip over his partner and then get back into it for private party. So I just feel like it's a bit too on the nose for me. I'm not big on private party. Yeah. No, not in general. Um, The worst finisher for me. I don't like anything Hager does. And I really don't like that. Like, the arm choke with the knee and the dick because he can't actually beat anybody. Um, best finisher? I know you guys just said you're not big on Private Party. Jid and Juice is pretty cool. I like the Hurricane into the RKO. Uh, yeah, that, that that's the the better side of it for them. You know, you know what else is good? The the lockjaw. 
Britt Baker's little uh, mandible claw brings a Saturn. Just bite mm-hmm. her. <laughs> well, fuck. Okay, so you're okay. So, so, so like, why have you never said that to about mankind and stuff like that? Oh no, I've always said that about mankind. I never understood why the mandible claw makes any sense. <laughs> Just bite his fucking fingers. <laughs> it's I, think like... okay. I think that's the idea with the mankind one is that he used to have it uh, wrapped up in leather, didn't he? Yeah, he had like the it. at least like the cloth type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the best ones. I mean, there's quite a lot of options. I I love the F10. Because I love the F5, and so the F10 is just double the F5, essentially just spinning them around a lot more. And because it's, there's so many little guys in AEW, um, <laughs> Wardlow can get so much airtime with them. Um, big fan of the Drill Claw. Obviously, the One Wing Danger is great as well. I actually went with um, a tag team move though, the uh, the Buckshot Trigger, the mixture of the the Buckshot Lariat and the V Trigger from Kenny Omega. Yeah, and, uh, that was Adam a pretty cool one because they just kind of combined what they already did, and they made it look really brutal. The best spot and the worst botch. Uh, let's go best spot instead of worst botch. Uh, switch it up a little bit. There's two that I had written down. Uh, I think I'm leaning more towards one, but it's actually one of them's more bombastic and the other one's just better that I wrote down. Uh, one of them is I enjoyed Sammy Guevara's flip at uh revolution he did like a i don't know i can't remember he splashed through the table yeah that was fucking great Mm. and i want to give it to that but i also want to potentially give it to the finish of stadium stampede yet i'm leaning more towards the sammy guevara revolution one because that's just the way that it is whereas the stampede one it's like all right you're landing on the pads and everything so Uh, i I also thought about maybe giving it to even though they didn't fully do it, the constant um, vertical suplexes at a stadium stampede that you're supposed to imply that it was uh, throughout the entire football field. Uh, yeah, that's that's that <laughs> like I really loved that. They didn't. They clearly didn't do it because they cut back and forth between them. But you're, the implication is that they just the did it field over and suplexes. over for the whole fucking field. And I I kind of want to give it to that too, but. I'm leaning more towards uh, Guevara's flip because that was great. I, I kind of appreciate that because my my best ones are both um, the, t- the two that I'd written down are both Sammy Guevara ones as well. Uh, the first one is obviously the 630 through the table because that just looks absolutely sick. But the other one that I, I kind of am leaning towards just because of just how much it's been replayed and how much fun it was is Sammy getting hit by the golf cart. Yeah, yeah. that's that too. Yeah. Like, Sammy was just a the gift that kept uh, kept on giving in terms of uh, just crazy spots and funny moments. <laughs> I would agree with you on the golf cart. Yeah. Which is going to be awful because when we get to the worst. Yeah, the worst is Matt Hardy on the concrete. It sure mm. is. Yeah. There were only two real choices and it was that and, or it was the side out. Uh, yeah. the, the side out budge but like realistically side out's one didn't end up hurting him as badly as the hardy one did so yeah that was uh it's definitely the hardy one yeah i mean a, a dude could have potentially died <laughs> and that was just terrible uh, we're going to talk more about that on other things um recognition it's the most underrated and the most overrated i've got a bunch written down i don't know who i'm gonna end up going with here but Here's what I'm thinking as far as overrated. You might want to go, whoa, 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 for some of these, but here's what I'm thinking. Uh, Marco Stunt, but then again, is he really overrated? Yeah, see, I always have a problem with this category because I don't know who is underrated and who is overrated. Who's rating them? Like, let's start there. Yeah. Is it, is it being rated by the company? Is it being rated by fans? Is it being rated by like both us, just generally? Kind of a thing. That's where I go, like, well, Marco Stunt. I don't think I can give him most overrated. Maybe that's more so just I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Marco Stunt because they don't make him seem like he's the biggest deal in the world. He's not like people are arguing that he should be winning the championship or whatever. So, no, nah, not the case. Miro. Yeah, I'm not really digging Miro as much. Uh, I do think that there's a big drop off of what happened with Britt Baker where she went from not all that great to wow she's improved a lot to actually yeah so i'm not really digging that uh i do honestly think that the lucha bros are overrated from fans 
but I wouldn't put them the most overrated. Private Party? Potential? And the two that I'm really leaning towards more than anything else, though, are Matt Hardy and Darby Allen. I think the, the the Darby one is misplaced just because of the reactions that he would he would typically have gotten when there were fans there. So I understand where that might be coming from, but I think the his the response that he gets outweighs that. The Hardy one's a bit has a bit more merit to me. The Hardy one's but, a stronger choice to me because not only is he being treated as this like I mean he is a legend like he's a Hall of Famer all the other kind of stuff, but it feels like they. And especially he himself are like, oh, he's like, you know, like if a Hulk Hogan went in there and it's like, oh, you're Matt Hardy and the broken brilliance type stuff or whatever. It's supposed to be this big deal. I don't think it's all that great. So I am leaning more towards Matt Hardy for this. Um, It doesn't mind. I was overrated again. There, there are a few options, but again, I find it kind of difficult in terms of just gauging who's considered overrated and stuff like that. So my choice was Jake Hager. Fuck because him. I kind of I cause I kind of feel like you could just put any big tall guy next to Jericho and he would have cost a lot less and he would have made just the same amount of impact that Jake Hager has made since he joined AEW. Yeah. I, I I take that back. The staring at Wardlow has been great. <laughs> that that part, that part's great, but then again I think you could have just built up some other Brian Cage could have dude. done it. Yeah. Or someone like that. Just just anybody else next to Jericho and just had the him stare with uh, Wardlow. And realistically, Wardlow, when you just put Wardlow and Jake Hager next to each other, you feel like, yeah, Wardlow's so much better than Jake Hager. Uh, he's not with the company officially, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it anyway as an honorable mention. Warhorse is stupid. Stop it. Okay? <laughs> it's, not, it's not funny. Like, he got a TNT title match. It's not good. Moving away from that, uh, overrated. Ah, Matt Hardy's a really, really, really tempting choice. Mm. Matt Hardy. I think this was like the sad realization for Matt Hardy that maybe you're not the guy like you think you want to be. The grass isn't greener on the other side because you don't actually have any uh, as much to grow. <laughs> uh, and then. I think about it. I would say Miro, but Miro's just getting started. I'm not going to throw him away just yet. Uh, it, see, it's hard because I also want to say like Lucha Bros. Because I love Ray Phoenix, but like Pentagon, I think is just a taunt now. Mm, we're going to get into that. <laughs> uh, what do you just say, Pentagon then? Well, th 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 there's an option there. Uh, I think overall, I'm gonna have to say Matt Hardy. Honorable mention being Pentagon and uh, Miro. Now, most underrated. I have four names written down. I would have thought a few months ago Scorpio Sky would take this easily, but he's really dropped off. And nobody seems to be really talking about him as much anymore. So I'm like, well, uh, he is underrated. And maybe now I'm starting to kind of understand why he's not going any further is because maybe he maybe there's like a missing passion or something like maybe that would be the type of case where if you were Vince McMahon, you'd be like, well, why don't you just grab this by the balls and just do something? Because it's like, what have you been doing, Scorpio? Like, you're well, great. Do something better. Like. Well, can Maybe. we talk about that, though? Like, I know AEW is supposed to be this, you know, it's all these fresh, hungry people. But uh, realistically, a lot of it is a bunch of people who slaved away on the indies and kind of lost their passion for it along the way. Like, I think I, that's a reality. I want to be saying that he's the most underrated because he's one of the most talented and isn't going farther but at the same time, I'm like, well, maybe he's in the spot that he's in because he's in the spot that he's in, you know? Same with Sean Spears. It's like, he's got a lot of talent, but then again, I can kind of understand now at this point why he's not world champion. So I am leaning more towards the two other options, which those are Trent, who I think is... He's got something to him that, like, I can't even quite put my finger on. 
but I think that Trent's only barely tapped into what he can do. And I really like, this is a stupid example, but this week's being the elite where they're just doing the, uh, ghost of Christmas past and whatever. And like the reactions that he has on that is so good. And it's like, he's just like, yeah, I'm a ghost. And, uh, here's whatever. Cause I'm a ghost. And it's like, it's funny. And I think that he's great in the ring. I think he's got a good look to him. And it's, he's just sort of hanging around in the mid card of the tag team division. It's just a shame, but I gotta say my pick most likely is John Silver. John Silver's great. Yeah, yeah. There's no one's gonna around here is gonna deny that John Silver's great. But the issue is that I couldn't choose John Silver as most underrated because everyone just talks about how underrated John Silver is, and if everyone's talking that's about true. how underrated he is, right. he can't be underrated. That's, that's, that's my that idea. is true. Then maybe I would so push I had, Trent in that and start instead yeah. because of that rationality. Yeah, I had to. I, I decided that I was gonna choose. Well, I chose two people actually, but I chose two people that I think are really good, but nobody talks about how good they are because there are other people in their faction that get the stop uh get the limelight a little bit more like Brody Lee or um John Silver or even Colt Cabana to an extent. I am a big fan of Evil Uno and Stu Grayson as a tag team. Probably even more so Stu Grayson because I think Stu Grayson could do a lot on his own if he if it was on his own. But I'm a big fan of the tag team. I feel like they got a lot of unnecessary I guess flack. Not yeah, flag from early on in the year with that whole stupid Dark Order segment. But ever since then, they've built into being just a very stable, good hand as a tag team. I think they could be, they I mean, should be more in the conversation for being like future tag team champions than they are right now. Fair enough. Uh, Rob, you got a uh, most underrated? Oh, most underrated. Um,. So the, again, these are so hard, but I'm gonna go with under, almost like underutilized, and fucking Britt Baker should be the world champion. Like I don't understand how you created a women's division, and you didn't just run with Baker. And she's my pick. But can she be argued as underrated if everybody kind of assumes she's gonna be the one that beats? Cheetah. Well, that's why it's a stupid category, Tony. <laughs> that. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, ring work. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's you know, ring work. Um, best and the worst. Um, I, I hate to be this guy, but uh, the worst is Dasha Gonzalez. Yeah, I was, I was about to put that out there. <laughs> there. I mean, there are two choices for worst ring work. It's Dasha Gonzalez and Michael Nakazawa. That's like you literally like you put those two out there. It's just like had, Dasha is so much worse. I had Dasha or Reba. Rachel, I'm gonna wrestle. I, I'm sorry, Dasha. Really? I'm gonna. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. No, that could go under uh, mic work <laughs> rather what than ring work. Go under favorite or guilty pleasure because that's just like. But yeah, Dasha. Fantastic. I mean, bless her heart. She got a chance to wrestle, but she she hasn't trained well enough, so she's just not as good. That's just the way that it is. Um. So yeah, Dasha would definitely be the worst. Best... Kind of spoiled for choice for best, really. Unfortunately. Oh. I'm There's go... three that I debated about for best. It's Omega, Cody Rhodes, and Orange Cassidy. Um, and I'm gonna my... go MJF because he's hmm. so dialed in that everything he does matters. Um, I mean, my best was out of choice of three as well, but it was Omega, Adam Page, or Nick Jackson. Hmm. So I think Nick Jackson's the best hot tag in wrestling, and I think the fact that I don't say Matt's Matt is struggling a bit more with injury, so Nick has to carry the load a lot more. And I think he could have, do really well as like a singles guy if they pushed him. But I'm probably going to go with Kenny Omega because it's the safest pick, and he is one of the best wrestlers in the world. So I mean, but yeah, that's like uh, I don't know. I guess that was so much of an obvious pick that I looked around other people because yeah, Omega's the fucking man. But I would say Cody is definitely other as well because for his type of match, because mm -hmm. he has a very specific brand of matches which is very based around melodrama and stuff like that. He does it better than pretty much anybody like that type of match. That's where I lean more towards Cody over than Kenny. Garnish Cassidy to me is like, 
I, I probably would give this to Cody and Orange Cassidy would be my number two just because he's so fun to watch. Omega's like straightforward, you know, if you're looking for that kind of a match, Omega's going to deliver. Cody, I think, is a good mixture of he can do some of these different things, but he's telling those best stories in the ring. And Orange Cassidy is just like flat out fun. So I think I'd go Cody as best overall. Uh, and we all agreed about worst, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll show you. Yeah. Mike Work, just the, you know, talking on the stick. Um, best, I have four that uh, I could pick from. Orange Cassidy is actually one of them, funny enough. Despite the lack of Mike Work, I think he makes the best use out of the little bit that he says. I do think, of course, Jericho and MJF obviously have to be in the mix, but I wanted to give a shout out to Ricky Starks. I think that he's actually really good. He, especially on AEW Dark, surprises me at how quick he is on things. So I wouldn't give him the award for best, but I do want to give him a, an honorable mention shout out. I think overall, I'd probably just go with MJF, though. I'm going to go Cody here. I like uh, he lost me with the no thing. I, I can forgive it. I can forgive that one thing, even though that was bad. No regrets. Uh, Cody's Cody is very good at the showmanship of wrestling. And really, he should be at the top of WWE. But if they never let him go, we wouldn't have an AEW. And I just think Cody is very good at what he does. I think fundamentally it has to be a joint award share between John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. Well, if we're just because of we're that just going one, one no, promo. I don't, I don't care, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Like if it should be year round, it's just that one promo segment. That was the greatest promo segment, I think, in the past five years of wrestling. Between that John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, that that final one building up towards their match, at um, yeah, to full gear. I think that was like the perfect way to build up a sort of match. But if you're going like overall the year, then I would still go with John Moxley. I think John Moxley's been excellent on the microphone this year. Uh, the worst side of things. This is where this is kind of like, I guess, kind of the mean thing to say. The people that can't really speak English all that well just unfortunately can't cut the promos quite as well. So like Tai Con Chi, like she struggles. And that's not their fault necessarily because it's just like, well, they that's not their language and they're struggling but it is what it is you know yeah she I might mean, not I'm... necessarily be the worst it might be anybody you know i mean i haven't heard anything from uh yeah qt marshall in a while or something but like you know a, a lot any of those people that can't really cut a promo at all they're all in the same sort of that's eh, whatever they're all bad you know well, I, I kind of go with the mindset that AEW does a good job of hiding the people that aren't great at promos and they don't do as much yeah but the one that i think stuck to my mind as like someone who at least gave what I thought was one of the worst promos of the year. It's Jade Cargill. I thought her promo on Cody was terrible. Hmm. And and I know she hasn't done anything pretty much since then, but that one which really sticks to my mind. But, and that's basically because for the most part, AEW just has a lot of people that are either ranging from decent to very good at promos. So like, there's not really many that I could picture in my mind them being bad at it. Miro sucks. <laughs> like come on the you broke my shit i'm mad because you killed the, the arcade cabinet and that was bad mirror gets my pick and it's because i expect a lot more of him you know who uh i forgot to mention is one of the best oddly enough still after all these years jake the snake oh yeah Jake's yeah right i wanted to to say i want like, to that as well yeah, you know, Taz is, he's terrible on commentary in a fun way. And I mean, uh, more just as the mouthpiece for his group, I feel like he's a great yeah. talker in that regard as well. Like, you get him on commentary, he's terrible, but he's fun to listen to. You get him for a promo, and he's just amazing. So he's great, too. But Jake, Jake talks nonsense, and it's captivating. He's just sort of like, you know... You know, a snake is uh, rolling along there, and it's going to do this, and it's going to. And you're like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying, but I'm listening. You know, Listen, <laughs> Jake the Snake Roberts and Arnie Anderson went back and forth on the mic once, and it put a lot of people to shame, and that's a tragedy because <laughs> Jake the Snake and Arnie Anderson are like at least in their sixties. So shame on the modern roster for not being able to cut a promo. 
I think that there's interesting things when it comes to some people. If you watch Being the Elite, how different they are than on Dynamite, where like Kazarian doesn't talk on Dynamite, and he's great on Being the Elite. His yeah. character, just like the whole "Do you?" and everything like that, and the fucking Mark, whatever that kind of stuff, like that's great. And then you get some people like Preston Vance and Alan Angels, and they have no charisma compared to somebody like a John Silver. So any kind of segment with Dark Order, like Evil Uno is more fun to watch on Being the Elite, I think, than he is on Dynamite because he can play up a character that's completely different. And I really don't like Anna J on the mic. So she stands out to me, too. But She's growing on me. She's very young, too, so she'll get better. Hopefully. She might be She might be my pick, actually. Because if, if I don't want to give it to somebody who just doesn't, like, you know, oh, Michael Nakazawa, because he can't speak English too well, that's kind of like, ah, I don't want to give it to that, because that's mean unnecessarily. Anna Jay, she does speak English perfectly well, so maybe she she might be my pick. It's one of the, maybe it's one of those three from Dark Order, because there's such a vacuum compared to somebody like a, a John Silver that anytime that they start talking, the whole segment just gets a uh, nosedive. It's a shame. Uh, match of the year. Best and worst match of the year. Um, the worst. I got two written down, both from All Out. Now, now, I didn't carry on throughout the whole year like with notes like I do with WWE. Even that, usually best and worst match of the year, it's hard for me to think of the worst. But I got two from All Out that I really didn't like a whole lot. One was the tooth and nail match. And the other was the broken rules match, which I think I have to give it to that. Yeah, I'll give it to the broken rules one as well. It's a match that didn't get to play out essentially because one guy almost killed the other guy. (laughs) <laughs> or well, I don't want to blame you on Sammy. It's just like one guy was stupid enough to fall backwards off a giant forklift through a table. And yeah, so yeah, that that match is the worst one for me. I think that's, it stands out above everything else in my mind. Yeah. This is awful, you know? And not a match, but I really want to say this every chance I get. They, these pay-per-views are too long and that sucks. Yeah, cut a couple matches. I'd be fine with it. Best match of the year. There's only two in my mind. Stadium Stampede is one of them. Mm-hmm. And Page and Omega versus Young Bucks. That's, that's the one. That's, that's it. That's, that's, my, that's the pick for me, too. It's Stadium Stampede's number two. Page and Omega and Young Bucks is number one. There you go. Uh, okay, like, Page and Omega against the Young Bucks it felt like, all right, we're finally here. This is the AEW style match that we've been promised from the very beginning. Like that was just everything. Yeah, I think it it just stands head and shoulders above pretty much everything else this year. And there was there was some other good stuff on the AEW side of things. Like I'm a big fan of again Stadium Stampede. I was a big fan of um, oh. just that. Um, or that parking lot brawl match between best friends and um, uh, uh, Proud and Powerful was really good as well. I saw some people call that the greatest match they've ever seen, and I think that's a bit much. I, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a I thought it wasn't even a, anything special. Like, on a regular match, week, I, mean. I was just like, yeah, that's it's <laughs> fine. Like, it's a five-star match according to Meltzer. He loves things his own way, you know? I like the I Quit match between... Uh... Boxley and Kingston. Yeah, that was. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the. Like, I thought the I Quit match was a bit. It, it it lacked a little bit for me. I think it wasn't violent enough. It's odd, an odd, odd thing to say, but I feel I feel like there was um, there was quite a lot of like they've obviously got really good like tag team divisions. So there was a lot of really good tag team matches throughout the year. Like, obviously, FTR versus the Young Bucks was a great match as well. Maybe a bit too long, but still a great match. No, I agree. I think that match was really good. Had there been a crowd and maybe like mm. you shave a few hours off that pay per view, <laughs> it's a really good one. The uh, Orange Cassidy and Jericho stuff was really good too. Uh, I only really liked their first match. I think the other matches were a bit. Lighter. Yeah, the uh, that's where I'm going with Not the Gatorade the... match was. I-, I could do without it. 
Yeah, the the first thing that they did, that's the one I'm going with. That's the the one that the other ones were piggybacking off of. But honorable mention, because you can't say it for any other match in their division. Hikari Shida versus Penelope Ford was fantastic. Much better than I expected it to be. I actually preferred the um, Hikaru Shida and Nina Rose match when Hikaru Shida won the title. I thought that was actually a pretty good match. Was it double or nothing? Um, yeah, I think uh... so. Also, for, for more of the women's division side of things, one of the matches that stood out for me was um, Serena Deep versus Thunder Rosa. Yeah, that was Serena Deep, well. Allison K as well. Serena Deep has been a bright spot for this division. And she's not even technically in it, right? <laughs> no, she's signed. She's oh, they, signed. they made it official? The the one that's the thing that's weird about her is is she's the one that signed yet she's the one with the NWA title. <laughs> weird. So that's the technical skill side of things. Um, I mentioned before we got two other sections. Before I do that though, I really would quickly want to plug the Patreon, patreon.com slash smart moment. Go ahead and check that out. If you got the spare change and you want to help us grow, then consider donating at least a dollar, and that'll help out quite a bit. $10 and up gives you access to the dark casts because those are Patreon exclusive. If you don't really like Patreon, but you want the same idea, there is the join button on the YouTube channel. And if you want to pick up some kind of merchandise to get something specific out of it, like, you know, ah, oh, well, if I'm going to talk some money your way, I want to get a t-shirt or something, then you can do that on the Tee Public and Redbubble shops. So go to smartcatmoment.com. You'll see a little link on there. It says merchandise shops. You'll find all the information for both of those as well as the ones for a mango tees, and Fanboys Anonymous. And if you don't know what Fanboys Anonymous is, go to fanboysanonymous.com and you'll figure it out that way. So let's go to the writing awards. Catchphrase or slogan of the year. Worst is zero miedo. I fucking hate it. Shut up. Stop saying it. You say yeah. it a hundred goddamn times in every single match. I'm done yeah. with it. Yep. And the song too. This isn't the, the, this isn't the <laughs> song award thing, but it's the same type of thing. <laughs> Lucha e- Bros. Mexican. Mexican. Zero Mido. Mean us in the ring. Oh my god, I fucking know. Like, <laughs> and I, like I like Ruckus too, but like that song sucks. That song sucks. The phrase sucks. The fact that he does it six times in each match. You know, I really hate when people do the entrances. Uh, most people do this, and it's something that is bothersome, but whether you're WWE, AEW, NXT, whatever, so many people have this idea in their mind that they've got one pose that they do. They do it when they go to the ramp. They walk to the ring and then they do it again. The exact same thing. I hate that. Anyway. <laughs> what's, uh, yeah. what's your best and worst, uh, your worst catchphrases that you guys have? Shh. I think Skype is fucking up with the white noise again. Yeah, it's your turn to talk. I'm I'm being quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's the shushing. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't great. Um, yeah, I really I have to just echo Tony's sentiments. Pentagon, it's too much. It's too much. How do you say too much in Spanish? Maybe they'll say that a hundred times. <laughs> uh. I should know this. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, I took three years of Spanish. I don't fucking remember. But I can I can say my family eats in a window. So. <laughs> Mi familia come en la ventana. <laughs> uh, best catchphrase. Uh, I'm better than you and you know it. It's the only one I can think of that I really like. Yeah, I, I can't really think of many like actual catchphrases that the AEW superstars have. I I guess I, I one that really just sprung to my mind is everybody dies, just because he lives it. Yeah, he lives like that gimmick, so I kind of like it. I feel like I can think of more quips from commentary that feel like catchphrases, like "You got to give the people what they want." Or uh, we're going to picture in picture. Uh, <laughs> restaurant quality, picture in picture. Restaurant quality coming out right now. Like, Everyone's I looking for the push. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> that's all it really comes down to. Like when I thought of this, I thought I'm really enjoying Justin Roberts going yada 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 North Carolina. Like <laughs> I think that's hysterical when Kenny Omega comes to the ring. Yeah, there's an, ins- an instance of something that's in the WWE Awards that we can't put on here as best ring announcer. They have one. <laughs> so, whatever it's Justin right. Roberts. Uh, you know. And it is, because he's great. 
what is the whole did fine what is the whole north carolina thing why is that a regular thing i have no clue it's it's a reference to michael jordan oh what's the reference i don't get it yeah (laughs) i think i think michael jordan is is, i think he's from north carolina maybe i think it's just it's just something to that sort of like he said like he's he wrestled in north carolina so he wrestled among where the greatest well, in, in some people's eyes, the greatest sportsman that ever lived wrestled and stuff like that. I used to think it was just a joke, like the idea of like, oh my God, he's just, he's wrestled in North Carolina. Just thought, okay, let's think the most like fuck ass site that we can possibly think of and just go <laughs> like, oh, he's wrestled there as well. It's just like, wow. I don't, I wouldn't see whether they would change it up every single week. It's like, says, he's wrestled in North Dakota or he's wrestled in Idaho. And it's just like. Yeah. And then it just became built around the North Carolina. It would be like, and he's from winnipeg which is on the exact opposite end of the country as north carolina yeah. <laughs> like, okay but that counts as a catchphrase at this point even though it's uh justin roberts yeah. it's tied to no, him you no, know? i'll say it's justin roberts saying north carolina i also shout out to i i like how he gives people different entrance uh announcements like wwe is so freaking wooden everything's just the same that's why when gregory uh gregory Ham- hamilton why did i call him gregory <laughs> Greg Hamilton was doing the whole best in the world. It was interesting because it was slightly different, whatever. And sometimes he does it with certain people, but, uh, and I like Mike Roman with everything too. But, um, I like, for instance, even like when, uh, Justin Roberts is like best friends. <laughs> like you can tell that it's this weird, like kind of uh, smile to it. Like yeah. we're, uh, weighing whatever from wherever. Yeah. I, I, I like remember that. him give like some sort of interview about this where he just like he's he's apparently he talks a lot to the AEW wrestlers about how they want to be introduced and what special special quirks they get put into it. Whereas in the WWE approach, it was very just straight laced. They couldn't be as yeah as free as they are in the AEW side of things. That's why it's the type of thing where it's like you need to have a lot of character, but you want to show off your character. Fuck you, you can't do that. <laughs> Even something. Uh... As simple as the uh, Michael Naka 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 uh, Nakazawa, Naka. like that gives him something. I know more about Nakazawa that way and the uh, slipping off the friggin' ropes than anything else about his character, you know. Actually, you know what? Does this technically count as a catchphrase? Uh, uh, Orange Cassidy holding up the thumbs up. I mean, you can you, if you want to, just so you can give enough of a reward to Orange Cassidy. Then sure, <laughs> it's a sig- like, it's a signature. I don't know, Tony. It's your it's your reward. You do what you want. Well, I mean, yeah, like we, you know, we... but like, what, do you think that that would kind of that would kind of count? Because it's his gimmick is like he's not really like a talker. It's a signature. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna say that it is, and I'm gonna give it to him. Why not? <laughs> Fucking Orange Cassidy's great. In Actually, fact, you know what? The, you know what? Best catchphrase of the year is it's Darby Allen. I like turtles. <laughs> uh, uh, well, if they had a little bit more time with it, it might be Shivani's. It's Sting, <laughs> or maybe it's Taz on commentary going. <laughs> not, for, just, not for nothing. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just telling you. I was just saying. Uh, you know, I'm telling uh, you, Taz, bro. Uh, Blank Jones. Yeah. <laughs> is it a catchphrase to say Anthony Gogo just like not knowing anything to say at any moment in time? <laughs> yes, he's like, great. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's he's great. fantastic in the ring. Yeah. Oh, she's great. <laughs> uh gimmick of the year. Fuck it. I'm going Orange Cassidy. <laughs> but I do really, really like John Silver and Alex Reynolds trying to recruit people for Dark Order and Reynolds being like, why don't you drink the Kool-Aid? And like that kind of thing. Drunk hangman. Oh, Drunk Hangman is great. Drunk Hangman is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I I had the choice. It was either Drunk Hangman Page, Dark Order in general, because I just really think the Dark Order done done some really good stuff this year, or just MJF because MJF is great. Yeah. You can't go wrong with MJF either. No. Is it weird that I feel like we have more choices for gimmicks in this company than we do the one that's supposedly based on gimmicks, and has a bigger roster? <laughs> Yeah. Worse though, I've got a couple. Oh, there's plenty to choose from. Uh, uh Marco Stunt. I hate it. We just a midget. Get, That's his gimmick. He's, he's just he's a small guy. Why do you he's have jungle jungle boy and Luchasaurus? Oh, and Marco Stunt's hanging around. What? I mean, he has nothing to do with any of this. Why is he a part of this group? Because they're the oddities, Tony. There's plenty of other oddities. Look at Evil Uno. 
but Marco <laughs> stunts. I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Marco stunts just a, a boy and a smaller boy and a dinosaur. That's it ruins the whole thing for me. I really don't like pretty much any of the gimmicks that Matt Hardy's done at this point. So he might win just as far as pure numbers goes. I didn't like heal young bucks. Didn't understand at all what was happening with that. And two other you ones. Miro is one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> God, you, you, he, the guy comes in, and it's like, okay, now we're going to be able to do the serious stuff because he was, you know, getting wasted away in WWE. Now you, you get to do what you want to do. You know, you finally can express your creativity the way that you want to. And he's like, I got the ring gear that I've always wanted, whatever. And your character is that, you know, I play video games. That's That's it? Really? But I gotta say, even more than Miro, Ally slash the bunny. Oh my god, I forgot. Ally was Ally, and then she was the bunny, and then she went back to Ally and started teaming up with Brandy Rhodes. And she was the baby face out of the group after being the heel out of the group. And then she left the group and said, I was bored and went back to being the bunny and fucked off. And again. apparently that was supposed to mean like she was just cucking Blade, that she was bored with Blade. But they didn't explain any of it very well. All of that's just terrible. So I don't know if I'd give it to Miro. I don't know if I'd give it to Ali. I don't know if I'd give it to... Uh, Matt Hardy, but I, I'd lean more towards Ali, probably than anybody. So, actually, well, Miro might be more offensive. Even Miro is very tempting, except there's one longer arc that I have to crap on, even though I love them. Brandy Rhodes is just awful when she's trying so hard to be character. Brandy Rhodes is great as Cody's wife. That is not a knock. They have a great relationship, and when they show it, it really comes across as this genuine bond that radiates through the television screen. Brandy Rhodes tried several times this year to do her own thing, and it was dog shit. Night oh, you mean collected. you don't love her walking around going, I've got a figure? You're Night supposed Night to cheer me, but I'm going to be a bitch about it. What? Nightmare Collective was dog shit. So much so that they just sort of ended it. Yeah, that was really terrible. That wasn't this year, though, right? They canceled it before. No, no, they, they, no that they, was um, this year. Yeah, they finished in January or February time. So oh, February. February. oh okay. Oh, that might. Mm. Yeah, that was <laughs> really fucking bad. So mm. then she ends that, gets to Cody's side when he's fighting MJF. Great stuff, because Brandy is believable in this role. Then all of a sudden, she's teaming with Allie, who Tony's already mentioned. Just is sort of teaming with her now. They're the Nightmare Sisters. Why? Okay? And this is very clear. Allie wants revenge on Brandy. She's manipulating QT. No, we don't go that route. We just go with Brandy's being a bitch because she's, she's got her head up her ass because she's got an action figure. <sighs> okay? And they just drop that and then they just randomly decide here's jade cargill hmm. okay sure brandy cuts a promo that some of the internet loved some hated and then they go and we're gonna have brandy be a bitch again only for the next week for them to go and she's pregnant and <laughs> scene like <laughs> what are we doing here yeah and again, I love Brandy Rhodes, but that was a mess, and that is my pick for worst gimmick of the year. Um, the, a lot of the ones that we mentioned probably fit with the worst gimmick of the year: Miro, Brandy Rhodes. Uh, Michael Nakazawa has a terrible gimmick because it's just spraying baby oil on people. It's like it's not. You really... mean you don't like that? No, nah, I'm not a huge fan of it, if I'm <laughs> honest. But the work, but just I'm going to mention one. Like maybe my pick would just be just to be different. Um, Chris Statlander is not an alien. 
<laughs> she is just not an alien. <laughs> she is just a human being like all the rest of us. She's a human being wrestler. Stop pretending to be an alien. It's stupid. <laughs> it's kind of dumb. Uh, yeah, and they didn't they didn't get the chance to, but when they were doing it, they weren't really explaining it well, and they were just sort of taking the piss out of it. That's a good one. Title reign of the year. Best I'm going, John Moxley. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah, not much to talk about there. Worst, I've got two in mind. SCU for the tag titles. Well, that's not fair. But I also have Brody Lee for the TNT title. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I he Cody wasn't Rhodes. supposed to win it. I went, I went with Cody Rhodes' second reign as TNT champion. Yeah, that too. I mean, it's can we can we lump the can we merge the? It it is like, kind of it's the same thing because he wasn't supposed to drop the title to Brody Lee. He was supposed to carry it and drop it to Darby Allen. That's very clear. But they decided for a couple of weeks that he wanted to go fuck off and do something else. So they were like, oh, give Brody Lee the title and you win it back or whatever. So neither thing was good. He should have just kept the title. I'm uh, solid on Brody Lee, but yeah, I would. Also say Cody's thing sucked too. Without having so many titles and all those title changes, that's the whole title reign of the year. We're like, yeah, John Moxley's the best and those are the worst. <laughs> well, like, hey, if we want to expand on the Moxley thing, he was presented as a credible world champion and yeah. represented the belt well. Imagine that. That works. He held he it for a long time. He defended it against quite a bit of people. Some of them were bigger than him and he lost the title in a screw job. Like, what else do you want? You know? Yeah. I mean, most of the title reigns in AEW side of things this year were, were pretty substantial and pretty good on the most part. They protect the they protect their champions pretty well for the most part. So yeah, that's what happens when you have only four champions. Most shocking moment of the year. Uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of other examples that I can think of. I only have two written down. One of them being a more recent one of uh, Don Callis and the whole Impact thing. But just being like, yeah, just tune into the Impact because to me that was just like, wait, what? But actually, I think even more shocking to me is Vanguard 1 being destroyed. <laughs> Isn't that kind of stupid? <laughs> it's just I'd, like, like... I'd like to put my vote in for most shocking moment being Tony picking that as a shocking <laughs> moment. I didn't think that they would uh, kill off Vanguard 1. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say Winter is coming as a whole because I did not expect Sting. Even though, honestly, I should have. Oh, I totally saw that coming. So they're like, it's staying, and it's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> you what saw, did... but did you see it coming at that moment, though? Like, not necessarily at that moment, but then again, that moment sucked anyway because he didn't do anything. Tony Schiavone said it stinks. I'd be in a Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sting's Sting's debut is the winner of this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Tony, stop being a Grinch. Wasn't it obvious this thing was going to be coming? No. It wasn't obvious that no, it was. Uh, could I have seen like Sting doing something with AEW going forward? Yeah. Do I, I expect him to be a character on the actual show for now? It's just like, no, I wasn't was expecting him to be in a very prominent position and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, I thought that this was like that we spent like a good month going, oh, well, it was just the ticking clock yeah, until Sting pops up. I was up. joking. I was joking about the Sting stuff. It's like, I didn't expect it to happen this year or oh, so I soon. I fully or did. So I, I totally expected them to be talking to Sting. But for them to have Sting locked up, and just honestly, like, let's tell the truth, for Sting to be presented as a big deal in any regard, because his WWE run, despite his injury or whatever, was treated like shit. I thought he was popping up at full gear or something. I was just like, yeah, it's happening as soon as possible, because they got rid of all of the stuff on WWE Shop. So I'm like, oh, he's, he's heading there as soon as they possibly can. And then when he pops up, it's like, yeah, okay. So he did. Like, and then, uh, of course, uh, the other portion of Winner's Coming is, like Tony said, the Kenny Omega, Don Callis, hey, we'll see you on Impact, was just like, whoa, what is this? And now we got uh, Kenny Omega wrestling at Hard to Kill. I'm already sick of Don Callis talking. I'm already done with it. But, like... You mean you don't want to hear again how it took them years to plan... Yeah, I'm, <laughs> like you don't understand. I've heard it across like seven programs now. Yeah. I'm done. Like, but yeah, those were my most shocking moments. So, best and worst 
smark out moment of the year, which is essentially like the thing that made you the happiest is the best. And the thing that made you the least happy is uh, that how like how that kind of works. Um, I don't know what I would go for best. I wrote down stadium stampede with question marks. No, stadium stampede was my, is my small camera of the year, just because I know obviously it's not a quote unquote moment, but right. But what everything that happened in that just adds to just something that I've just watched and I was smiling from start to finish of it. It's just 30 plus minutes of just pure entertainment. Yeah, it was just fun. And there might have been some other moments here and there that made me like laugh more or something. But overall, that was like maybe the most fun that I had with AEW this year. How about you, Rob? You got a best? Uh, my best. I, I think it comes down to the again it's not a moment it's more of a match but that tag match at revolution just by the end of it i was just like i love wrestling and this is why i watch you know and moments like that are fantastic all the time and then uh, i'm gonna say it again it's sting like that was just this moment of like oh this is cool wrestling can be fun sometimes and uh, yeah, those those two would be the two moments. I got a lot more for worst. <laughs> uh, I really didn't like that tooth and nail match. Uh, yeah, um, that was bad. Mike Tyson trying to rip his shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that really was stupid. Uh, Hardy continuing to wrestle after his fall. Like, if you want to talk about pure, just like, why did this happen? Not even bad creative, just like bad decision making. That should never have been the case. And while that was happening, I was telling Caroline, I'm like, this is dangerous. Like, we might be talking about this for years. Like, something might happen here even worse because they just keep going. He might, like, pass out in the middle of this match and we might find out that he dies later or something. Like, this is bad. Uh, I really hated Cody's no promo. <laughs> I really hated that. No, no I to this. No yeah, I I really hated that so much. And nitpicking, I don't like when they present themselves as doing something different and being the alternative, and they do something like orange juice falling from the ceiling, where it's like this happens in WWE all the time. Oh, uh, you did the whole, the heel got something uh, dropped on them. Oh, no, I've got orange juice on my shirt. It's like, eh. But I can't give that the worst. I mean, I, I pretty much, like, I'd have to lean more towards the Matt Hardy thing. It's just being like, I don't want to watch this. Send him to a hospital. Um, anything that involved the Nightmare Collective for me. It's kind of like the worst knockout <laughs> moment. I think they were the worst faction that AEW's ever had. So anything they did at the start of the year, I think especially like the one where Luther debuts, just like, oh, wow, this is the... <laughs> this Japanese deathmatch legend. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's yeah. pretty lame when it's like, oh, my God, it's Luther. And it's like, oh, what the fuck is this? Yeah, so, like... yeah, so, so yeah every, everything involving them was just the worst. And... I, I feel like I've consistently crapped on like two things all day, but Miro, fuck it, fuck it. It's been awful. Like, I'm so glad that now he's at least starting to kick ass because those first three weeks were just some of the worst things I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm done. Like... Uh, best and worst storyline of the year. The only one I wrote down for best is pretty kind of like, I, I, there's a better pick than this, but I wrote down Dark Order trying to recruit people and being the elite, which doesn't really count. But I didn't really love a lot of the stories this year for me to think of. It's Moxley versus Eddie Kingston. It's yeah, amazing. like that's yeah, that's a good pick. Like you can go with that. You know. And it's it's either that or it's the whole Omega Page relationship thing. I think it's that like, they botched that. Uh, I don't think so. I think it had a. They had a logical run as a tag team champions. They're a bit like to and fro every now and again. I, I love that segment at the end of the Revolution match where you feel like Paige is going to dead come Omega at the end of it, but they carry on with it. 
they start to be a bit more cordial with each other. Then they separate. Um, Hammond Page wants to go back after the tag team titles. Pay, uh, Omega says that he wants to focus on his singles run. They have that match at full gear. And yeah, I think that it's something that's going to expand on Overwoods. But I think that the foundations they set this year is like really going to benefit another feud with them in a year or two's time. I. So. For best, it happened early in the year, but you got to go with Cody and MJF because it was just, it was so strategically built and then they did the match and then they didn't linger with it. They told a nice story and they got out of there and I love that. Worst, from a sheer broken heart standpoint, I have to say Young Bucks and FTR, but I would listen to an argument that says, the weird will they won't they heel turns with all of the elite could also be argued. But that Young Bucks FTR feud should have been better. Other candidates for worst, Miro. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm upset at you ruining my arcade cabinet. Okay, that's what you're gonna go with now. Like uh you know that story that they talk about on something to wrestle where it's like the guy stole the other guy's jacket. It's like, okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't like powerhouse Hobbs being. Oh fuck you! I'm not going to join your group. Never mind. I will. I thought that that was really bad. No, not even I will, because now he's not. I will. <laughs> now I powerhouse. <laughs> uh, whatever Matt Hardy was doing, I didn't like pretty much any of it. That, that's that's a good one. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal. This whole story. Yeah, that's that's a bit new. I'll, I'll let it yeah. play out first. But my main pick is Brandy and Allie. Awful. Boy, it's very clear where the uh, where the fall where the uh, the problems. Are in this yeah. yeah, like the there's certain people that we haven't talked about at all, mm. positive or negative. Like they're just there. We they have not Jungle Boy once really, or Luchasaurus. Or... Yeah, like like Luchasaurus is great for what he does. He's not the best at anything. He's not bad at anything. You know, it's a sort of. We've barely mentioned anyone in well, I've mentioned like, a few people in the inner circle, but I haven't mentioned I'm trying to think of uh I've like, not nothing to say about TH two other than yeah. like they're on my list for I'll spoil it for potential worst tag team of the year. But like uh yeah, Dustin Rhodes. It's like yeah, he he did his part well. Yeah, yeah Dustin was great this year and like there's other like, I enjoyed Dustin this year. Don't really mention Lance Archer at all. Mm. Or... I got him down for a different thing later, but like mm. yeah. Certain well, people Joey Janella, just... Joe Janella and um I got him down for something later Joe Janella like, like oh, well maybe we'll talk about it later. Yeah. But it is funny that that's like a lot of this depends on Brandy Rhodes, Ally, Miro, mm. <laughs> Matt Hardy, that kind of thing. Oh, like, was, oh, oh I'll just add my one then to the mix there. My worst storyline is the nightmare collector. Yeah. Yeah, See, but... like, very, very apparent where the foul, where the faults are. Damn it! Keep Somebody really needs to get step in and tell Brandy that, like, can you just like stop trying to be a heel? Because that's all you're trying to do. And I know it's fun, and you've got the pull to be able to do it because nobody's going to tell you no. But somebody should. <laughs> uh, pay per view or special event of the year. So constitute either like a you know fighter fest isn't a pay per view, but it's like yeah they treated it as a pay per view or whatever. Um, I I don't have these written down. I forgot to go through and I oh well, it's not so much I forgot I didn't have the time to go through and to really check everything out. I do remember not liking a lot of all out, so I might put down all out for the worst and maybe revolution for the best if I remember correctly. That's kind I of I believe that's, that's, that's how it airs checked yeah. out. Yep, revolution's the best one. All out is the worst one. Yep. Correct. <laughs> there you go <laughs> again sometimes these things just uh they work themselves out like we totally disagree about the sting thing me thinking that it was just like an obvious or whatever but then some of the other things are just like yeah moxie's best for that yeah, yeah all i have to worst for that like well i just i just like, say as a as a general even though their pay views are as rob said earlier and i agree with him they are too long i think in general AEW delivers good pay-per-views it's just that the fact that all out it wasn't a terrible show from top to bottom. It was just a case of it's disappointing because they'd set a high standard. Hey, hey do you know what might have killed all the momentum for All Out? That Matt Hardy spill. Yeah. We talked about. <laughs> oh, you know what? I forgot to mention on uh, one of the potential like worst kind of 
not really worst moments of the year, but a moment that made me really just go like, oh, this is really shitty. Uh, Ivalice, just no selling was one of those things where I would, I wanted to give it some kind of a shout out here on the awards. I don't know where it would have gone, but that was a real like kind of a middle finger moment. Sort of. Yeah. Just like, uh, we're on commercial break. I don't want to pay. I don't want to do anything, whatever. I'm just not going to go along with this. That's really weird. Uh, let's move over to the performer awards. There are about like eight categories or so in this best and worst manager or valet or sidekick or whatever you want to call those kind of things now um best i'm going either between taz and jake roberts yeah, i don't know which it. one i'm gonna go with but one of those two maybe more to more so taz taz yeah i think taz as well yeah there you go <laughs> I feel like he, I, just, I just feel like he did more yeah I, I don't I, when i look at lance archer and jake i think jake's doing great work no, don't get me wrong but i don't feel like lance archer needs jake roberts in the same way, I feel like the other group could use Taz a lot more. Yeah. Or bonded through Taz more. Under the worst side of things, I really don't dig the bunny. She's hot, but that's it. Uh, I don't like Rebel. Reba. Reba. Yeah. Re- Rebel. Why did I say Rebel? Uh, that's her name. actual name. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she was Rebel before. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tanea Brooks, is that her name? Yeah, something like that. Um, I really don't like them just redoing Vicky Guerrero. Yep, there, there it is. <laughs> yeah, Vicky's my one. Vicky's probably my one as well. <laughs> and I don't I really mean... love Arn Anderson to be honest. He's not oh, my he's not oh. my pick, but it's like I really want to just kind of go. Well, Arn's not doing it for me right now. But it's like there, you know, between the picks. I mean, I'm obviously not going to pick Arn Can over you Vicky. Which right? channel he watched during the Monday Night War? Nickelodeon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very much WWF over WCW, so I don't have that same kind of affinity for Arn. And when Arn mostly stands there, it's not doing much for me. Tully's better than Arn as in this capacity, for instance. Vicky Guerrero sucks. I'll just but, get out of the way real quick. They brought her in. Yeah. They did nothing with her other than finally give her a theme song. And it was awful. And I don't I don't like it. Nyla doesn't need it. Nyla's fine on her own. Mm-hmm. And as far as best, Taz is great. He's terrible on commentary, great on a promo, proving that those two things are do not correlate. Oh, you actually reminded me of one of those, again, maybe one of the better moments from AEW that had slipped my mind, but when you mentioned they brought in Vicky Guerrero, I remember what they originally brought her in for, which was that Jericho video plan. call thing. Yeah, the flim-flam yeah. thing. But that was just like, that, that, that was a lot of fun. I can't remember what other celebrities they called it. I know they got his dad involved in that as well. That was great. Uh, I think they had like Fluffy in there. J- Jericho did some good stuff this year. He did some not so good stuff this year, but he also did some mm. good stuff. We didn't even mention the um, uh, the uh, Dennis the Dennis musical number. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Like when I first saw that, I was royally offended. But like these things leave your mind quickly. I wasn't, and I. I thought that it was kind of funny, but not funny enough to make it like a best moment or anything. I didn't think it was a worst moment. It was just a thing. People went nuts over it. Meh. Uh, commentator of the year. I do want to give a shout out to how terribly fun it is to listen to Taz. The best part of AEW Dark is Taz and Excalibur going back and forth easily. Uh, Tony Schiavone is the best one. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Tony Giovanni was the actual like overall commentator that was best. The, the other ones I had listed down were actually just two wrestlers that do good commentary, which is Jericho and Ricky Starks. Yep. <laughs> I would agree with all of those things. Yeah, exactly. And the worst is Anthony Agogo. And worst is Anthony Agogo. Although I will give a shout out to Jim Ross because Jim Ross is just not doing it. You know? I, 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 want... I think he's been a lot better. I don't like Stark. So uh, Anthony Agogo, I haven't heard his horrible commentary. He is very much on the same wavelength of everybody else who gets on commentary and has nothing to say. Like, you know, when like, say like a That's Titus nice. O'Neil or somebody gets on there or whatever, and it's just like, oh yeah, uh, this guy's great. Uh, he, you know, th- that was a great Better body or worse slam. Worse than Beth Phoenix. Worse. He's worse than Beth Phoenix. Yeah. 
Okay. Because also he doesn't even have the experience of being a wrestler yet that he can kind of lean on either. Yeah, he actually talks a lot and says like, well, that would be a really th- uh, like tough thing to to deal with as a boxer. And like that kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, in boxing, we do this and whatever. It's like, I don't know why they put them on there. Testing them out one time, sure, maybe try it. But they've put him on here like every week. And he's just not good. Sorry. Uh, Tag team of the year. I am going Page and Omega for best. I'm going with the Young Bucks based on the fact that they were both involved in that excellent match revolution and also the match with FTR as well. So they're kind of the common denominator. Ding, ding. That's true. Young Bucks. Yeah. Worst, I had a couple in mind. Uh, I don't like to butcher into Blade too much, but I don't think I'd give it to them. SCU really went downhill. Uh, TH2 is just blah, but I think I'm going to go with uh, Chaos Project. Well, Luther's not offending anybody. You guys pick it on poor it's Luther. not wow me either. <laughs> uh, Nightmare Sisters. <laughs> oh, fuck, yeah. Okay, yeah, never mind. It goes to them. <laughs> oh, my God. I totally forgot that they would be in the pick. Uh, in the mix. Yeah, it's Nightmare Sisters. I was gonna go with Natural Nightmares, but it's the same thing. All four of them. Fuck them. <laughs> Unless you count Nightmare Collective as, you know, because it's like tag team slash faction, whatever. So Like, look, I like Dustin, but I'm not sold on QT. And the Nightmare Sisters, you know, we were, we've talked about it ad nauseum. Yep. <laughs> I, I'm glad you mentioned that, because, yeah. Not a big fan of Chaos Project, but I'll take them over Nightmare Sisters or Nightmare Collective. And for whatever it's worth, I don't like the team of Jake and Jericho. No, they should be doing Jericho and MJF as a tag team instead. Correct. That's why they're doing it tonight. And then maybe Jake and Wardlow as well. Uh, where are we at? We're at uh, best and worst heel of the year. We did all the tag team stuff, right? We have all said yeah. best and worst. Yeah. yeah. Uh, best and worst heel of the year. I really like uh, Lance Archer, but I do have to give best to MJF. Yep, MJF. Yep. <laughs> and uh, worst... <laughs> Uh, the three that I have written down are <laughs> we've talked about them a lot Luther uh huh <laughs> Miro uh huh and Randy Rhodes <laughs> all right there it is <laughs> although I do have slash Alley and I do have a little note of Jack Evans too I'm just not digging so, Jack Evans so I'm gonna go Brandy who are you guys going <laughs> yeah. I'm going Luther Tony I'm going Brandy all right. I mean, Miro is real Miro close. Miro hasn't been around long enough right. for me to get that mad yet. And Miro's had one screwed up attempt at this. Brady's had like six this year. <laughs> so, no. Luther's annoying, not good heel, but he's not super offensive. He's just kind of like, I don't know why. The, the, the aesthetic is completely different, but it's like the Highlanders where I was just like, at the time when they were wrestling, I'm like, yeah, who fucking cares? They suck, but who cares? And it's like, oh, Luther, yeah, he's here. He sucks as a heel, whatever. But who cares? He's just getting his ass beat. Whereas Miro, they're putting stuff behind and it sucks. And Brandy, they're really putting stuff behind multiple times. And it's just terrible. Baby face of the year. Uh, I have three for best and three for worst. Um, my options for best were John Moxley. Uh, Jungle Boy. And Orange Cassidy. None of those are my picks. I'm going to go Cody Rhodes. Cody's very good in this role. As... Oh, well, see, he can't win, though, because he's not supposed to be a heel or a face, remember? Oh, you he's, motherfucker. Shut he's up. adamant about that. <laughs> Shut up. Like, <laughs> that is the worst. Out of spite, I didn't put him down for any of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going Cody as a baby face because screw you. Whether you like it or not, you're a baby face. I can't go with Cody because that one time he dyed his hair black. It's like, no, nah, you're clearly not a baby face. <laughs> you're dying your hair like that. Um, best is Adam Page. I think he was the most over guy on the, especially when obviously the crowds were in there as well. He was the guy that was getting the biggest uh, baby face pop. So I'm going to go with him. And Tony's going Orange Cassidy. So uh, right? actually, I'd probably lean more towards John Moxley. Huh. He was great. He'd Moxley very was very good. Orange Cassidy is a close number two, though. And Jungle Boy's there just because Jungle Boy's Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy's great. Worst baby face of the year. There's three of them. Like I said, uh, Matt Hardy is an option. 
uh, Marco Stunt is an option. You really don't like Marco Stunt? I'm really just not a big fan of Marco Stunt when it comes to that. Like, yeah. But I think I overall have to give it to Joey Janela. Why is this dude a baby face? What are, you, what are you supposed to like about Joey Janela? He seems greasy and like like a he's like a slime ball character. And he's creepy. <laughs> but not in like an Undertaker way. He's creepy in the like, dude, get the fuck away from me kind of way. Like he well, gives well, off this vibe that does not seem like a baby face to me. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that at this. He also books Jimmy Lloyd a lot, Tony. <laughs> But you know what I mean, though. You know where I'm coming from with this. Like, I yeah. feel like I'm I'm supposed to be cheering for him. No, Joey Why? Joey Janela, when he first got signed. So, like, my introduction to him was through a lot of his spring break stuff, and I like the aesthetic, right? Like, I like the way that he makes everything look. It's, it's very '80s. It's got that very like that old school cool vibe. I thought Joey was gonna be a huge star, and he did some stuff last year. Like before they got TV. And then it was like as soon as they got TV, he was dead in the water. And then as I got this job and I started covering more of the indies, I realized he's a god on the independent scene. And the indie scene loves him. Release this man and let him go to the indies. And he'll be better off. Like Joey does nothing for the AEW crowd, for the AEW audience, for the the AEW show. Let Joey Janela go. Calum, are you as offended by Joey Janela? Um, I wouldn't go with Joey Janela as my choice as babyface, like worst babyface. Oh, he's not year. my pick either, but I was just letting. But, I was but yeah, I, I, like he's not doing anything for me, but I'm not like offended by him. I like seeing him just get destroy his body every now and again. That's <laughs> like can always be entertaining. Can I guess one of your options? Yeah, Chris Statlander. No, I actually think she's a good babyface. Ah, I, I hate the fact that she's an alien because she's. Not oh, can alien. I guess she's your pick? Being. <laughs> yeah, Young Bucks. No, because they were good for most of the year. It's only when they took. It's only when they were only bad when they were heels. So I'd almost put them for worst heel of the year because but when where, they were heels, they suck. Were they heels? I, I still don't get that. But go ahead. One of my choices was Brandy Rhodes. <laughs> 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 because like she's not really that good as a baby face. So <laughs> like she's okay when she's surrounded by Cody, but it's really Cody doing most of the work, and she's just. Like, because she, she's a baby face that really wants to be a heel instead, so she can't really commit to it the whole way. She's a good cheerleader. But I'd probably say the worst baby face is somebody that I've mentioned quite a few times already. It's, it's Michael Nakazawa. Michael Nakazawa, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, because like, why would you cheer a guy that just smears baby oil on each other? It's like, okay, it's like, it's funny maybe one time. Like, it's like that's one of those things, like, I was, when people say, oh, it's funny the first time you see it. It's like, yeah, but that's only, like, maybe if you were, like, five. Like, you know, funny, oh, he's spraying oil on him, and then it's just like, you see it the second time, it's like, okay, he's just spraying oil on him, and it's just, no, nah, it's not, not, not for me, not my taste. Who's <sighs> your uh, worst, worst? My worst baby face of the year. Uh, I almost want to go Archer, because, like, they're turning him now, and I don't like it. I'm not sold on pack as a baby face either, but I, again, this is the company that swears that baby faces and heels don't exist uh my worst baby face brendan cutler i don't i don't care i'm <laughs> sorry uh, i don't care like and qt marshall can go in that bin too i don't care about him <laughs> either like uh, he, he eats an apple <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of character does he also have the worm inside of him like, what, 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 what are you saying here <laughs> Uh, all right, so we got male, female, and performer of the year. We can kind of lump these in together in in some ways. Um, a female performer of the year. Go round the table. I don't think this will be a long one. Well, Callum? let's let's put it this way. Uh, is your performer of the year male or female for best male. and worst? Male. For uh, best and worst. Oh, yeah. for um, probably male. Because I have male for both. Yeah. Okay. Same. Okay, so then let's do just a female, then we'll wrap up a uh, male and uh, overall performer together. So female, uh, the best I've got written down, Hikaru Shida. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Big Swole and Penelope Ford, though. Yeah, my best female is Hikaru Shida as well. 
My best is Britt Baker because she's got the total package. Don't say it, Tony. <laughs> Damn it. I wanted to say it, man. <laughs> Luga. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did say Tony. Oops. Uh, yeah, Britt Baker is fantastic, and I don't know why she's not women's champion. The whole car she does great. And yeah, so I think just as a pure in ring perspective, Hikaru Shida is the best I've got. Yeah. Who would be the worst uh, dentist? Isaac Yankum or Lex Luger? Lex Luger. <laughs> oh, Isaac Yankum is a dentist, so of course he's Lex Luger. But I mean, look at his teeth. But look at Jerry Lawler's teeth. He was his dentist, and Jerry Lawler has great teeth. <laughs> yeah. that was, yeah, that's a good point. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Oh, there you go. It's like, it's like he just has a really, Isaac Yankum just has a really bad dentist because who performs dental surgery on themselves? That's true. Yeah, you know what? I can't fault this logic here. You, you're completely, <laughs> <laughs> you completely won me over on that. Um, for worst female performer of the year, we can run down the same list. I mean, it's not like where everybody's going to randomly go. Yuka Sakasaki. It's like you know, <laughs> that's why. Um, here's the list. It's it's Ali, Brandy, uh, Reba, Dasha Gonzalez, and Mel for me. And I'm I just like. You go ahead. I gotta say, it's Dasha for the worst for overall. If you really want to crap on somebody like that, but if you want to crap on somebody who's had more opportunities, it's Brandy. So I'm gonna choose someone who hasn't even been mentioned at all in this entire show so far. So that's that's how far back I'm reaching. Worst female superstar of the year is Awesome Kong. That's not Mm. fair. No, it's fair. She was like a, a big star coming in. She's she did. I know she only wrestled like for a little while in the start of it. I think she only had like one or two matches this year, but she is too slow. She is completely out of ring shape. She shouldn't have been brought in in the first place just because I know she's obviously got a name value to her, but she clearly isn't capable of competing at this sort of level anymore. So I'm going to go with Austin Kong as my choice for that one. Complete waste of money for AEW. You leave welfare queen alone. She needs that money. <laughs> <laughs> The show got cancelled uh, as well, so fuck her as well. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah geez. Uh, I think they, they hired her more as a coach, though. So the worst female performer of the year. Oh, God, let's just get it over with. It, it's it's Dasha. Uh-huh. But, like, God, it's, she got it's, to wrestle. Yeah, I feel bad saying it, but it's true. It's like when the, what was it last year, the year before, or whatever, when I gave it to uh, Carolina? That was last year. You just kept going. It's, it's Carolina. Because Carolina. Catalina, she sucked. It was just like she wrestled like twice, but she sucked twice. So she's got a zero percent rate. And Dasha, she got a bad promo and she had a bad match. It, unfortunately, you failed on both ends, and it's really crappy to be like, "Oh, you're the worst of the whole year." But that's how it worked. <laughs> you know, I mean, you didn't do a good thing to make up for it. Like, ah. That's why it's I like, know. I feel like I should give it to Brandy for, uh, but Brandy got better in the ring. I don't want to yeah. pile on Dasha too much, but I'll just say like, maybe she can improve if she has the desire to. Yeah. But it was clear that they sprung that on her so they could do this women's tag thing. And it wasn't the time. You could say her career so far wasn't awesome. <laughs> that promo, really. <laughs> Uh, and the male and the overall performers, since we're all going males for best and worst. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. I got to toss them out here. I, do we just say Jimmy Havoc is the worst? Just because of the way things go? Like, it's, you know, if you judge based off of credibility and all that other kind of crap, like in the ring, it's a different story. But as far as like value to the company, he's kind of the worst. Yeah, he was he was bad in that. But then again, you could say similar thing about like B Priestley on the other side of things, or I forgot like about the her. women you had by B Priestley, and you had who's the other a Sadie Gibbs that got released as well. It's like, but they didn't really. I I don't think because the issue I have with Jimmy Havoc things, Jimmy Havoc is obviously terrible publicity and all this other stuff with it. But I feel like he didn't do when he was actually did on screen wasn't offensive. Yeah. So I can't really like if I was going to go for like the. If I'm going strictly like in a kayfabe sense, I couldn't choose him. Yeah, that's kind of where I stand with it. As a worst male performer, I'll give you three guesses. Uh, I'm sure that Talons is Nakazawa. Yeah, it's Michael Nakazawa. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, while we're at it, I, can I guess Tony's? I have. Is it, is it Matt Hardy? 
I have three written down. I haven't decided yet. Jake Hager is not not one of them. No, Matt uh, Hardy. Matt Hardy's one of one of the three. Uh, yes, yeah, so the other two. Here. Oh, based on what we've spoken about so far, so the Matt Hardy would be Luther. Nope. I'm not Luther. Okay. Not Luther, huh? Um, I'm trying to remember which ones that you've mentioned so far. It's like so. I'm trying to think. So Matt Hardy. Pentagon. Um, nope. Peter Avalon. No, no, I like Peter Avalon. Okay. Uh, Miro. Huh. Oh, Miro's one of them. Nope. I'm now I'm curious. So who are your picks? The other two are Marco Stunt. Oh, oh yeah, sure, yeah, I should have chosen that one. <laughs> and you guys wouldn't have guessed this one. Alan Angels. Oh, I like I like the Wood Dark Order guys. Oh, they seem pretty good to me. Why are you so down on Alan Angels? He's like a coach at the Nightmare Factor. At this point, there's in Dark Order, you've got John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Anna Jay, Mr. Birdie Lee, Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, Preston Vance, Cole Cabana, and Alan Angels. You got nine people in this group. Tell me something about Alan Angels. He's five. That's all you can tell me, right? Isn't it? He looks right. a lot older than that, actually. Like, <laughs> if, you, right? if you combine Alan Angels and Preston Vance... You get 15. You still... <laughs> or 50, if you're depending on what you want to say. <laughs> yeah, if you do addition or you do multiplication, that's a different story. Uh, that's well, really good. If you cut the other one in half, then you only get two. And that's uh, <laughs> the, the thing with those two, even Preston Vance, Preston Vance at least is bigger. Alan Angels is tiny and has no personality. Preston Vance is bigger and has no personality. The two of them, they if they were off the roster right now, it wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Their background furniture for uh, just extra numbers. So I don't know if I'd go worse because it's not like he's like the way you made offensive sound, in I... the ring or anything like that. He's just bland. There's nothing to him. He's got no personality and his in ring work is just whatever. Huh. It's a pretty actually fast yeah. summation. So I might go Alan Angels as being like the most inconsequential person on the roster. Like, well, there's a difference between being most inconsequential and worst, right? So it's it's hard for me to tell. I mean, if I go pure, just like the least favorite person, like oh, this person's out, and I don't really want to watch them wrestle or anything. It wouldn't be Alan Angels because he wrestles on dark, and who cares? But. It's just quality wise, Michael Nakazawa was a good option for that. Luther's a uh, potential option. I don't know. How you guys uh, where are you guys going with this? Maybe you'll sway me one way or the other. I've already gone Nakazawa, so Yeah, you go you yeah, go Nakazawa. Nakazawa. Uh, so I understand why you don't why you would put Matt Hardy. Well, I you're think... gonna say Miro, aren't you? No, I'm not actually. I thought about it. And here's the thing. Luther was in the main event of Dynamite, and he did not belong there. When he was running those spots with Jericho, it did not look pretty. So I'm going to go Luther. Hmm. I can't say that I've enjoyed a Luther match. <laughs> I mean, so. you enjoyed the stadium stampede. So the thing with Hardy is, I get it. The character changes were egregious. That stuff was too much. But Hardy... He can still least... go better. Yeah, yeah, he still does Stadium Stampede. He can still do stuff. And if you're just tossing around Marco Stunt, then that's, you know, Wardlow can pick him up and throw him into the... I don't know why you're so offended by Marco Stunt. What did he do to you, Tony? Did he kick you in the shin? Like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> the gimmick wore off on me the, the very first night. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Luther. Maybe I'd go Luther, yeah. Because really... I don't think I've enjoyed any of his moves. Oh, but And to be fair, while we're talking best and worst, there's a whole lot in that middle vanilla category. Right. And that's where like the rest of the roster fits. This roster, it's not as deep when it comes to the, the actual performance of it. So a lot, of, a lot of people could use improvement. But yeah, I would say Luther is the worst because he made him into Dynamite, and that was offensive. Now, best, I've got written down... Oh, well, we're all going to have a lot of the same... People, I would assume. Um, I mean, I, I'm only going one choice at this one. John Moxley's in there. It's John Moxley. Uh, yeah. And then it's he, John Moxley from there. John Moxley. John Moxley had a he he ruled it. 
he's, he's a world champion. I, I, what I value about John Moxley this year is the fact that obviously he was world champion for all of it and was a great world champion. But I think he proved this year that he is better than Dean Ambrose. Yeah. And that's what that's kind of the reason why I want to give it to him is just that yes, there was obviously a lot. I don't think like Dean Ambrose was as terrible a character as some people point out now, John Moxley, but John Moxley is just so much more of a visceral, entertaining, real character that I just feel like, yeah, it has to be him being superstar of the year. Just he proved anyone that ever had any doubts about him joining AEW over WWE he said like, Oh, I'm gonna show you that I'm I'm better than I ever was in WWE and I think he did prove it this year. Yeah, he's he's overall my pick. Um, I think that the three other people that I would give, if I tried to make like a top five, three of the other people that would be in there, I don't know who the fifth would be, um, would be Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega, and Orange Cassidy. And my fifth would be MJF. Yeah, MJF. I'd Paige yeah. in there as well. Yeah, Paige would be another good option. Um, I'd, I'd probably go MJF over Paige. Overall, John Moxley had a breakout year. And it could have been even better had circumstances allowed. But John Moxley proved that he could carry the ball. Yep. I like how much we've agreed on this podcast, gentlemen. We've pretty much only disagreed about a couple things where it's been, even if we didn't pick the right things, like yeah, you know, some of the things that like Nakazawa was picked for and like I would pick something else or whatever. Um, but it's like, yeah, I totally see it, you know. There's only been a couple of things we kind of disagree on, <laughs> and it's uh, uh so be- are, are all the best and worst superstars of the year the same as the men's one? Yep. I was gonna go with someone different. Maybe. Oh, you're gonna best go with different. Here. Oh, I thought you were. Well, oh, best one is John Moxley, obviously still the same, but like my worst is uh Mike Tyson <laughs> because I don't like seeing that him on TV. Oh <laughs> my god! I, oh god! <laughs> That's basically the, what it boils down to for me, unfortunately. <laughs> And uh, the biggest heel of the year is the shirt for not ripping. <laughs> no, no, that's the biggest baby face made him look like an idiot. Like an idiot yeah, like... That's true. Uh, yeah, so that's our shortened version, essentially, because we knocked this out in like an hour and a half compared to the WWE ones, which are going to be like six hours oh. long. So <laughs> That reminds me. <laughs> but we have a lot more categories and we have a lot more roster to go through. So we're going to have a lot more discussion when it comes to that because we have more picks. So it will be like, you know what? I'm going to pick this person from NXT. Oh, I didn't even think about that person. Oh, I haven't even watched NXT UK and, you know, whatever. And that kind of thing. Not that there's going to be tons of picks from NXT UK, but uh, yeah. Uh, there's that's... going to be a solid one pick from NXT UK. And I think we are all, we all already know what that is. Candy floss. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> actually i don't even think she did a single thing this year except for show up and say that she got signed i think that might have been it which is kind of weird um yeah drop your comments below tell us your thoughts on what i uh what like we had for our picks uh what we said we liked what we said we didn't like give us your lists as well and start working on your lists for the end of the year awards for smart Cow moment and the wwe side of things too because you know it's coming up so you got time if you start doing that now uh i don't know when this is airing for sure it's either airing on the 24th or the 25th but whichever case it is i hope if you are celebrating any kind of a holiday or anything like that that you guys have a very happy season with everything that's happening going on right now i hope you're being safe i hope that you are uh, emphasize emphasize the safety yeah i really hope that you are not just going ah it's you know it's christmas i'm gonna do whatever the fuck i want and everybody's gonna just deal with whatever I hope no, that's not happening, but um, I really would like uh, to wish everybody a happy holidays in any kind of fashion whatsoever. Uh, if it's today or t- it's tomorrow or it's yesterday or uh, it's, we're probably not going to do this on the 26th, but um, yeah, hopefully this was a good little uh, gift for you at the very least. And hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I did most of my plugs out of the way already. You know but... what we are doing on the 26th? We're doing the next episode of the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast. Tell them about it, Kel. Yeah, Paul Heyman's Smackdown podcast, the last episode of uh, 2002 and of 2020, of course, where we get to see the introduction of Team Angle for the first time, which is mm. so amazing to see. Like in 2002, 18 years later, one of the guys in Team Angle is now one half of the Raw Tag Team Champions. So just amazing how things change, but things actually stay the same as well. Um, we also see main event between Chris Benoit and Big Show to take on Kurt Angle at the Royal Rumble for the WWE Championship. 
We also have a tag team title match as well that we review. So yeah, there's plenty of uh, good stuff to watch on that. And Al Wilson. Special Christmas edition. Oh yeah, now Wilson, of course, the highlight of every episode of uh, Paul Heyman's Matt Down. Get to talk a little bit about him as well. But uh, yeah, that's something to look forward to. Of course, obviously check out all the articles on smartcomoment.com, including the power rankings, which is what I contribute. And um, follow me on Twitter at Wigmeister14 just to get my plugs out of the way. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at DudeFelice. You can check out everything I'm doing over at Fightful.com. And just keep clicking around and keep supporting, and we thank you. And if you are starved for more content, you can check out everything that's happening, not just on Smart Out Moment and under the mango tree at uh, fanboysanonymous.com, but also eWrestling News and Bleacher Report. You just follow me at Tony Mango and you'll find out whenever anything happens on any kind of these platforms. And yeah, stay tuned for the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast. Stay tuned for the hot tags the next week, which one uh, exactly when we're going to do that, but we'll figure that out. Stay tuned for the Smart Out Moment end of the year awards. Stay tuned for the Wonder Woman 1984 review. And anything else that's happening. And probably a Pixar Soul review if I can convince Tony. Tony doesn't have Disney Plus. Maybe I'll give him mine. Who knows? When's, uh, when's that come out? The 25th. Huh. Yeah, maybe check that out at some point, too. So, yeah, things happening. They'll happen when they happen. They'll be up on the channels and the websites when they are. And if you're following us, then you'll be aware of when they get up. And then you can, you know, listen and enjoy them, hopefully. But. That's going to do us in for this episode. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for all your support in any fashion. And we will see you next time. But for now, this has been another Smart Out moment, and we're being counted out. Yeah.